Now, today's guest is a legend of stage and screen, but Miriam Margulies has swapped the glitz and glamour of her acting career for a 10,000 kilometre, two month trip round Australia in a motorhome. Hi, Miriam, how are you? Very good to see you. Thank you for having me. Oh. Yes, wasn't that extraordinary that she's got the loo in the kitchen? You didn't look so <laughs> impressed with the shower, Miriam, I have to say. Well, I like to keep a certain separation, don't you? Yeah, I always think I'd like the simple life, and then I see that and I think I'd last about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, listen, Miriam, know. explain to me, how can you be almost Australian? How are you almost Australian? Well, I'm a citizen of Australia, but I didn't feel that I really had entered into the spirit of the place. I didn't know enough about it. And that's why I took this incredible, challenging trip, which left me bloody exhausted, to tell you the truth. <laughs> but I think I'm more Australian now than I was. Let's put it like that. And a lot of this is because your partner, Heather, is Australian, yeah? But she wasn't with you, but you met her family. Yes, I met her family. And she hates me to talk about her on television. She said, you know, she, every time she looks at herself on Google, it's all about me and not about her, which is not right. So um, she's there. She's in my life. We've been together 52 years, and I'm very grateful. Wow, 52 but years. But you didn't do lockdown together, no? No, because she lives in Amsterdam. I mean, the reason we're still together is because we don't live together. Everybody can see that. <laughs> Wise decision. <laughs> so that how have resonate. you found lockdown then, Miriam? Oh, it's awful. It's absolutely ghastly. I hate it. And I'm not going to be brave about it. I, th I think it's an absolute... Well, I've got to be careful of my language on your programme. Yes, you do, Miriam. It, yes, you do. It's not to my taste. <laughs> Are you on your own, Miriam, or do you have anyone with you, or is it just you? No, on my own. You think anybody would come here and live with me? Oh, Certainly not. Oh, don't say that. But that must be really difficult. I mean, to be away, to be away from your partner during a pandemic and to not have anybody, especially when we were in strict lockdown and weren't allowed to leave the house. I, I have um, my my friend Denise comes to help me, and. My friend Marina comes to help me, and I have a gardener, M Marcos, and I can wave at him from the window. Wow. And I've got a lovely garden as a result. But actually, in my house, I don't have anybody. It's it's horrible. I'm lonely and, and depressed and anxious, and I... I I don't know what we're going to do because I, we're never going to get out of this, you know. It's I think, ne we're never going to get a vaccine. I think what you're saying will resonate with a, with a lot of people there, Miriam. And mm -hmm. also for you, because you are very active and you're very mm -hmm. sociable and you like to go to the theatre a lot and indeed a, a, appear at the theatre. And, of course, your, a lot of your acting colleagues are completely uh, out of work and the theatres are closed. For our profession, it is a complete disaster. It's the shutdown of our lives. And I, I hope you, you might go and, and visit the website that's trying to, to help actors and, and people in the business. Um, look at, look at uh, my website or look at Cassidy Jansen's website. You'll see what to do. But it, it is a disaster. There's no point in pretending. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it is the end of our lives. Well... Hopefully not, Miriam, but I mean, undoubtedly really, really challenging times. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just, you, you said there that you've been with your partner, Heather, for 52 years, and I appreciate mm -hmm. that Heather doesn't like being spoken about on, on telly, um, but it, it does mean think. So you came out then when you were, what, 27, and that's 50 years ago, my maths isn't so good. That must be so different from today. I mean, what was that like? Well, I didn't know that you weren't supposed to. I, it never occurred to me that, that that loving somebody and going to bed with them was, was not on just because they were the same sex as you. I've never had a problem with it. And I know that some people do, and I think I feel terribly sorry that they do. Um, and I hope things are better and changed. But, you know, I mean, we've all got to have a bit of a, a, a friction, haven't we? Mm. <laughs> and that's what it's about. <laughs> sex is friction. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, because you talk about theatre, I know you've been doing this little online play um, and it's about someone living with dementia and you looked after your father who had dementia, didn't you? 
So you, you've got kind of quite an inside track on that. Is that something that you worry about for yourself personally? Oh, yes, I do. I think I'm on the way to, to, to losing my marbles. And um, it, is, it is worrying. It's worrying for all of us. And anybody who has had any experience of looking after someone with Alzheimer's, seeing them gradually disappear from you and not being able to help, and especially now when for a long time we couldn't visit people in care homes. I mean, it is a, it's a terrible thing. Old age is a, is a horrible business and dementia is a horrible business. And we need to be kind and loving and understanding and know more about it. So the more attention it gets, the better. And that's why I wanted to do that play. It, it's not a miserable play, actually. It's quite funny. And um, I, I was very pleased to be asked to do it. So I hope people will watch. If you watch, it's free. But it would be very nice if people put a donation in. And it's, called, UK. it's called Watching Rosie, isn't it, yeah. for anyone who, who wants yeah. to see it? Miriam, Judy's got a question for you. Judy's at home, just like you're <laughs> at home. <laughs> uh, Miriam, you seem to have such a worldly experience. You know, you said you've been your part of 52 years. You know, you've travelled, you're doing this play, which is about, um, you know, dementia. What advice would you give to anybody that just wants to live their best life? Live it now, because I don't believe that you get anything in the afterlife. Don't get fat. I made that mistake and I bitterly regret it. And always tell the truth. Never let the sun set on a quarrel and weed as much as you can. That's my advice. Oh, Miriam, it's you. so interesting the, today to see a different side of you because we've become used to the very gregarious, outrageous, you know, kind of shocking Miriam sometimes. Who's the real Miriam? Mm. Well, I hope that all of it is, because I'm not conscious of, of ever pretending. I think we're all very many layered. I'm sure you can be a horrible person as well. Uh, and, and you always seem very nice and very intelligent. But, you know, circumstances make things different. And I'm living through a difficult time, and I don't intend to pretend about it. I just want to tell the truth. And that's what we all should do. Mm. Yeah. Well, we appreciate your honesty, Miriam, and uh, I hope that we all have happier times ahead. And uh, keep well, take care of yourself. So do I. Yes, thank you for having me.